Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C Three Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about the Netflix animated movie, The Sea Beast. So it came out on Netflix, I think, about a week or two ago at the time that we're recording this. If you haven't seen it, we are going into spoiler territory. So if you don't want to be spoiled, go check it out on Netflix and then come back and see what we had to say about it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So it was interesting for me with The Sea Beast because when I was on Netflix, because I didn't actually know the movie was coming out i remember seeing a trailer for it a while ago but i forgot about it and it was on one of those recommended things on netflix and when you know when you're hovering over something like netflix will either play a trailer or a scene and netflix decided to play a scene and the scene was where the girl was talking to him while he was like um at the bar celebrating and stuff like that and i remember watching that scene and being like wow i'm actually getting pulled in right now this is kind of surprising. Why do I kind of want to watch this? And then the scene ended, and I was like, man, you know, I actually kind of want to see this movie, which is why then I recommended that we should talk about it, and now we're talking about it a little bit earlier than we planned because the thing we wanted to talk about got delayed as far as coming out, so here we are. But um, I, I'm kind of surprised about this movie, especially because... I really, I feel like this movie is 100% done by Netflix, right? It's not like it's a DreamWorks film or anything else, like or any other like well-known anime animation studio, right? As far as like who is, but I, I, I don't know. I don't, I actually don't know who animated this or not. Um, all I know is that it's not Disney Pixar, so mm-hmm. I was actually surprised because this was like Disney Pixar level. And I think it's yeah. the same group that made Big Hero 6 and Moana, oh. which is also surprising because those are both Disney. So wow. it's kind of like they got to the people who do Disney and Pixar to do this other film that has no correlation to Disney Pixar. But, um, I mean, it really is impressive. Like, it looks beautiful. Um, I did, I'd never heard of it before. I didn't get hit by any of the marketing for it, but I saw it on Netflix in the like top 10 or something. And mm-hmm. um, I saw the name Carl Urban. He was in a lot of things. Uh, we talk about we talked a lot about him when we did the boys because he was in the boys and you know he's he's in a lot of films that we both like. Um, yep. So it's kind of hard to not want to check it out, even though the entire time all I heard was butcher. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's the same and accent. Your, your ears are your ears are better than mine because I heard the voice and I was just like, "Why do I under, Why do I recognize this voice? Why do I recognize this voice? This is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna upset me when I find out who this is." And as soon as I saw the credits, I was like, "Dang it! I should have known." <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think I recognize too many other people from the cast except for the guy who plays the captain um because mm-hmm. he's 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 in the crown um and a bunch mm-hmm. of other things but um Ter- i think he was in chernobyl too which he did a really good job in but that aside um cast is pretty good um the I don't know, like, the story didn't quite do it for me, um, even though I was having a great time, you know, with the nautical piratey uh, mm-hmm. sea stuff, because I love that stuff. It's It just reminded me a lot of Pirates, like, the first Pirates movie, and so I was like, I had the this same is my feeling. Jam. Right, you've got this kid on the raft that they have to save, and then, you know, um, the whole beginning, I was like, this is Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's not. It's about this group of people who hunt monsters, see monsters, um, and then it just kind of that wholesome turnaround where it's like, well, the monsters are not actually bad. It's just kind of a like a a long history of hatred between two different groups um, that was instigated by a certain. Um, group that being rich the family. royalty yeah a rich yeah. family exactly um but i think like at the very beginning when when they were kind of not really 
pointing at the monsters as the villain, I was like, well, obviously the villain is is the royalty, and that guy who wants to um to like he's like the admiral or something, and he's like the big ship, and I was like, that's the Dauntless from Pirates right. of the Caribbean, <laughs> but it's not. Um, so that I was like, barely in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> But I was like, so they're not the vil- like, so the monsters are never really pointed to as the villains because it's between right. humans versus humans. So uh, I kind of just um, kind of had the idea where it was going to be something like how to train your dragon kind of thing where it kind of turns around. It's like, actually, the monsters right. are good. <laughs> yeah. And if you, I don't know if you saw my thumbnail, I basically called the thumbnail how to train your sea beast. Um, because <laughs> like even the the design of the beast is very similar to Toothless as far mm-hmm. as like the long neck and the face and the eyes like that design is it basically looks like a red Toothless that swims instead of flies mm-hmm. right um, but and yeah like I remember when I was watching the movie I was having a good time too and I was just thinking wow I had forgotten what it felt like to kind of like watch a really cool pirate movie like that feeling you got from Pirates of the Caribbean, like it, it felt I, it, I got the, I got the chance and opportunity to feel that again, for a little bit of time while watching this movie, and I really was surprised by how much I was smiling. Like I'm sitting there, like this is clearly a movie for kids, but I'm having fun every time the captain says something, that woman barks the orders and says, "Hurry up, you scurvy dogs!" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I am loving this right now." And then the action scenes in the movie like how jacob is like so skilled and everything i was blown away i'm like this is legitimately fun and it's weird too because like i would say without a shadow of a doubt that this is a kid's movie but it has elements in it that are more adult than you would see in like a disney animated movie because people are like drinking you know, like people are like actively drinking alcohol and beer, like in this movie. Um, they do show like a scene where, you know, the little girl is like she's hurt. So and he shows his hand and there's blood on his hand. And there's also violence against the, the sea creatures. You see them get stabbed and some creatures die. Some people get hurt. It's implied that maybe some people die. And so there's like there's a there's a good level of violence in the movie as far as like what is actually happening between the the sea creatures and the um and the people but it never feels like too much but it was enough that i noticed and i and i had the and and they also like have a couple of curse words in the movie too so it's not and it's not like heavy cursing right no one's dropping f-bombs but there's like a hell there an ass there i think there might be a dam but like so it's it's not so kitty that is rated G, but it's not. Um, it's also not so adult that it starts to feel like you can't show this to your kids. Yeah, I didn't really notice any of that because I was just like, "This movie is for me." <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm not even surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I just really like that stuff, like the swashbuckling. Blah, blah, blah. I'm I'm mm-hmm. still kind of I'm a little sad that I got rid of my Jack Sparrow hat, but you know, <laughs> gotta make space. Yeah, uh, exactly. But yeah, I I love the way they named the vessels. By the way, uh, I can't remember the name of the big one, but um, the 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 main vessel they had was named the, the Inevitable, Inevitable, and I was like, that's such an awesome name for a ship. Yes. <laughs> creative and clever because it's just kind of like well that's a word that we usually know and like i know like they name like i don't know i i enjoy naming inanimate objects so mm-hmm. this gives me ideas <laughs> <laughs> yes no the the ship well the ship name was cool the the crew was also very cool like one of the things i liked about this world too is like similar to parts of the caribbean it's not concerned with being historically accurate, right? It's just concerned with just having its own fantastical world that takes place under the backdrop of piracy. And, you know, in this movie, they're, they're pirates, but they're not called pirates. They're hunters. 
and their whole thing is that you know they they hunt creatures to protect to protect the crown and if there's any common thread that we had for the movies that we decided to watch this weekend it's how how the royalty how royalty and the crown can mess things up for everybody else they um, suck <laughs> yeah <laughs> in so many words so yeah and this world that they built is very cool and i liked i liked seeing the sea creatures i liked seeing how because i remember when i was watching i was thinking to myself i don't see how a ship of people can battle a sea creature on the water when they have like when they have the the advantage and somehow some way this movie made it believable that these people were good at hunting water dwelling creatures because they were a threat and i and i also like how the movie didn't shy away you want to talk like once again one of the things that made it feel like it wasn't so much like a kid only movie they don't shy away from talks of death and they don't talk shy away from the fact that you know little girls like yeah my my parents died my parents died for you people and i i like really like that because then when you constantly are aware that people have died or gotten hurt it does kind of raise the stakes and so i enjoyed that aspect of the movie as well and i really like the fact that they weren't afraid to basically put people in harm's way so there's also the theme of you know we, you mentioned it earlier for a moment um about how this was like rooted deeply in like hate and everything else like that's like we started it but then and then the monsters started hurting people and then everybody forgot how it even started and then now everyone's just killing each other and the the movie also doesn't shy away from showing that both sides have rage so we see it from the captain's side where like for a while there i was like the captain i guess has to be the villain because we got to like halfway in the movie and there was no real villain so i was like okay the captain's got to be the villain and then you know the overall villain is the crown but the other thing about it is that even red red has an opportunity to just leave like red sees the imperial fleet and has the opportunity to just go away you just leave they don't even know you're here and it's fine but red's so angry that red just goes for a fight and that fight puts um oh my gosh i forget the little girl's Maisie. name now but it put Maisie. it puts Maisie in uh in danger because of Red's actions, because of Red's inability to release the hate. So I at least like that they didn't just make it so that the creatures are just all pure and good and the humans are just all evil, but it really is this thing of like, we both hate each other because we both lost something because of each other. So I thought that that, and that's like a kind of more of a high intellect type of like theme that, you know, you don't normally see in like kids movies, which are usually kind of dumbed down. Yeah, it's interesting to say that because I, I kind of almost feel the opposite where I'm like, well, here we have another, you know, recycled uh, storyline that I've seen before, but I'm okay with because it's it's decorated with a lot of cool stuff to look at. Because, um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it is essentially a repeat story that's being told um, just, you know, in the guise of a different theme. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that being said, I, I, I did really enjoy the diversity of it. Uh, I like that it wasn't just a, a, a bunch of men on ships, which is what's historically accurate. They're totally cool yeah. with having women in command roles. Um, like you have that redhead female that was telling everyone how to, you know, do the sails and stuff like that. And then the first mate is a brown woman right. um so and and the little girl also so um i thought like i i kind of enjoyed that i noticed that right away because i was like cool there's women on the ship <laughs> and they're barking <laughs> orders because <so. laughs> i honestly don't think it would have been fun for me if it was just a story about all men <laughs> why can i say <laughs> well, I mean, that's why I brought up the fact that I like the fact that it wasn't concerned with being historically, historically accurate, accurate, right? Historically accurate, yeah. So, um, and it does it does allow it to be just more fun, and then it's just, it's more so about the world than it is about, like, 
these individual like they these people right because it just feels like this is just a world everyone lives in so yeah, yeah. i definitely agree with you um that it's like like the story is pretty cookie cutter but i also agree that like it didn't bother me because of the fact that I was just having, I was having so much fun. Cause as much as it is just kind of like a rehash of how to train your dragon, I, I just, I like the setting and I like, I like the characters that we did have in this. I, I, I actually liked the captain a lot and I understood where the captain was coming from. And when that captain was ready to shoot a little girl, I was like, Oh no, Oh no. Oh, this is, this is, this is bad. This is not for kids. <laughs> so, yeah. I had I had a I had a lot of fun with this movie. At, at the end of the day, that's I guess that's my biggest takeaway is that I didn't expect to enjoy the movie as much as I did. And when we walked away from it, I I had a good time. Yeah, um I mean I I thought it like the theme of it was really cool, like we mentioned, like a lot of it was just really fun for the majority of the movie and like the water and the leaves, the trees and everything, it all looks so friggin' real. Um, so yeah. I really felt like like it just was consistent consistently beautifully animated. Um, I think my biggest problem though with it was the ending because Ooh. Ooh. it beat me to it. It ended, you know, like it just didn't cuts off. Yeah, it's just like, okay, we're done. And, like, not, we didn't have, like, a lot of... Conclusion. Any resolution. Yeah, like, what happens to Maisie? What ha happens to Jacob? Did they, like, get a farm or something? Um, now that, like... Well, we the see them together. They We see them, like, together at the end. They're sitting on, like, their little porch with the, yeah, with the little but... pet thing. But I wanted a little bit more. Like, what does their life look like now? What What is in their futures now that... Because I was like, the whole thing, we questioned what their future was because he wasn't going to be a hunter anymore and because she's mm -hmm. an orphan. So, like, who's going to raise her? Who's going to bring her up? Is it going to be Jacob? Um, so I kind of wanted to see a little bit more of, like, what they were planning. Like, what's their future going to be like? Like... Because the way it ended was like, okay, they're both okay, and they're both happy. They're probably going to end up together. But I, I feel like there's no closure for our two main characters in terms of, like, how can I, how can I feel the like closure for this, for this movie, not knowing what their life is going to be like after this movie is over. Um, but then yeah, it's also the same thing of like well what happens to red what happens to blue what happens to um all of the hunters are they going to redesign society now that hunters are no longer needed and are the sea monsters going to fi figure out a way to live in harmony with um with the humans we don't get any of that yeah, the only thing they say is that they, they'll no longer travel to this area where the creatures are. But yeah, I was going to say that the the lack of closure with those individual characters that you're bringing up is, is, I think, highly tied to a lack of closure within the world itself. Because when you when you make a story like this, the whole and like, every, like any Disney film, How to Train Your Dragon does it too, you basically establish a way of life that says, this is how it is, this is like, this is how we live, and then a character says, I'm going to go against that. And going against that is what causes problems. Like, if you look at Ratatouille, it's like, we, we are mice and we stay, you know, we stay in, in our lane. And then it's like, oh, no, I'm going to be a chef, a chef. And by the end of the movie, then the, the mice and the chefs are working together to make food together. So the world has changed and you see that change. How to Train Your Dragon, they are now working alongside with dragons and flying with dragons. And you see, once again, this is how the world has changed. This movie doesn't show you how the world changes like you see the the crowned people run off but you don't get to see what happens you don't see to get to see if they like basically tear down that like hierarchy and that establishment you don't get to see how they like you said how they kind of re um how they remake the world and what what do hunters do now if they can no longer hunt do they work out do they work alongside the creatures like and i think the movie also didn't know 
which is why the movie just ends because a lot of that is a is very complicated and they wanted and i guess they didn't want to like really have to think about it too much but yeah because the the captain that's all the captain knows right and then they imply that the captain would change but the captain and jacob don't get any closure either like the la- the the last time the uh, the captain and jacob are together they're fighting each other and then there's not a scene where he comes back and hold and hugs him or anything and says hey i still see you as my son or i'm sorry or anything else like that like that just doesn't happen you know the the cap the first mate that you brought up who said that this is all she knew like we don't get to see her doing anything else like to show that she found a new thing to live for so like you you, you we me are 100 agreed on this like the biggest letdown of the movie is the ending and it's really unfortunate because everything else about it i had i really enjoyed yeah it was like it was just kind of like a like an upward climb and it just hits a wall and it dropped down. <laughs> um i mean it's it's like an acceptable ending because it has an ending there's just no yeah. closure there's no um it doesn't have that extra you know almost like we just needed like half an hour more to close all the loose ends and stuff it just felt like there were a lot of loose ends but um at the same time like they closed the biggest one which is the main story so it's like acceptable but it just felt like oh oh, okay the movie's over (laughs) um yep and i I just felt a little empty inside (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I don't know what's going to happen to them and what the world is going to be like. I hope they make another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And I mean, that's the only way we're going to get to see how the world evolved. But they have to be pretty creative, especially if they want to have new conflicts. But yeah, like, and the movie's already two hours long, which is saying, which is surprising. Like, when I saw it, the movie was almost, well, almost two hours. Um, I was very surprised because I figured since it was an animated movie, it'd be like an hour and 20, an hour and 30 tops. So. This is longer for an animated movie, but yeah, it's uh, not long enough, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it didn't feel long because I, cause, cause the journey was so good and mm-hmm. so interesting and like it, it, it just was very well made right up until the end. It's like they ran out of yep. money for the last half hour. <laughs> <laughs> right, they couldn't do it. One other... One other thing I liked, um, though, was that was the song they sang about like um, killing creatures, and I like I love those little pirate songs whenever I hear them. And I thought this one was pretty creative and fun. And I remember thinking to myself, "Wow," because uh, I've been on this thing about like because I was looking at Vikings and how Vikings were like, "We'll die for Valhalla," and I'm like, you know, the best way to try to get someone to die for your cause is the belief that there's something like good in death. And in this movie, it's like oh it's because we get to die a good death and i was like oh yeah, well that's funny because that's exactly the thing i've been like complaining about or talking about and then you find out because it's the link to the royalty the royalty are the ones that created that that image of a good death because they wanted people to die to give them more to get them to get them more wealth so i was like oh wow the movie actually had something to say about it that that's actually what they were <laughs> they were they were implying or talking about so i was like okay that's kind of cool but they play that song again in during the end credits, and I'm like, this song is so fun. <laughs> it's it's messed up because they're, they're talking about how we kill and gut creatures, and then we die the best deaths. But it's so catchy. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we mentioned that though about the wealth, because that's actually one thing I questioned. Where I was just, I just didn't understand how the royals were making money from paying guys to kill the monsters. Like, where is yeah, the profit? I, assume... I couldn't connect that. Yeah, that one's a little weird, too. I just assumed that there was, like, rare materials or something from the creatures that they were able to, like, use to, like, you know, have a monopoly on something or whatever or whatnot which is why they always wanted trophies to prove that you killed these things but yeah that's that's a good point that's not very well defined how the kill how paying people to kill creatures 
give and giving them treat those creatures as trophies to the royals allow them to make more money we they never really talk about that it's just kind of assumed that it just it just does you know how they say the plot thickens i feel like maybe it's a little too thin uh. <laughs> they're like don't think about it too hard <laughs> don't, don't, don't think about it <laughs> all right so, um that's all i have to say <laughs> Yeah, that's it for me too. But it sounds like you enjoyed it overall. So. Did I lose you there? Yeah, I think we lost each other for a second, but uh, oh, okay. but you sounds like you enjoyed it though. Yeah, overall I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, and I felt the same way. But you know, um, what did you guys think about the Sea Bees? Have you seen it on Netflix? Did you think that the movie was? like a breath of fresh air do you think it was too much like how to train your dragon did you have problems with the little with the kind of plot holes or plot thin things that we've like discovered while we've been talking about this uh during this segment whatever you thought about it comment below let us know and while you're down there if you give us a like share subscribe even if you don't though i have been chris and this has been cheryl and we'll see you all next time